in the rugged Kimberley region. At the top of the Tanami track, dirt road specialist Steve Graham is looking down the barrel of a make or break run. This is where the serious stuff starts now. 250 kilometres of brutal dirt road lies ahead. And it's just been drenched. Slow and careful. If you rush out it like a bullet and a gate, forget it. You might as well just go home and go broke. Steve left Perth six days ago for a series of jobs around Fitzroy Crossing. Now it's on to Balgo for a final pickup before returning to Perth. The storm's coming. I've got to get move as fast as I can. It's been a tough week of trucking. I'm racing now. It doesn't look like I'm racing, but I'm racing. Dodging wet season downpours. So there's another thunderstorm just floating over there. Trying to move machinery to a string of settlements, all whilst carrying a serious shoulder injury. I've got a busted tendon. Can you do me a favour, mate? And the stakes just got higher. It's a bit that can earn me a nice little quid or cost me a big heap of money. Now Steve needs to collect two 11-ton generators in Balgo. To lift them onto his truck, he's hired a special side lifter trailer. At $180,000, it's an expensive bit of kit and it's fragile. Last time I took one of these out here on this road, it ended up costing me and the company that owned it $11,000 for one of these control panels. And uh, I'm not taking that chance again, you know. I'm actually going to donate my pillows to the cause here. No matter how hard you try on this road, there'll, there'll be spots where the corrugations will catch me. You know, I'll be looking out for them, but I'll hit them and go bang, 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 bang. And that short amount of bang, bang, bang is when all the damage happens to these things. Well, we'll see what today brings. As Steve hits the Tanami, the last thing he expected. I'd have to say I'm having a good morning so far. The water has actually improved the road. The rain softened the corrugations here. It's a pleasant day at the office. But you can have too much of a good thing. You never know how much water is too much water. You wouldn't want to take this road for granted. She's pretty wet and soft through here. You're just looking at water and all of a sudden, that's too much when you're bogged. On the edge of the rocky Great Australian Bight, at an isolated border crossing, Cameron Smith's gigantic 130-ton dump truck... Coming up to the WA quarantine checkpoint. ..has been stopped dead in its tracks. Anything in the cab today? No, 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 no. Apple box, banana box, no, no, no. Quarantine officers are carefully picking over his load. She's just called over someone else to have another look at it, so there must be a concern at something. If they don't like what they find, Cameron's journey could be thrown into chaos. If they delay us, it's not good because we won't make it in on Sunday. After leaving the Lee Creek mine, he's now midway through a six-day, 2,600-kilometre slog to Perth. On the back, a dump truck heavier than the space shuttle worth three million dollars. It's a colossal eight metres wide and six and a half metres high. But loading complications... Just haven't got much room to manoeuvre the front wheel. ..and wet weather... There's a lot of tree debris. ..have put Cameron's schedule under strain. He needs to be in Perth by Sunday. That's in three days' time. If this inspection turns bad, his schedule will blow out even more. Very particular loading. Causing him to miss his delivery deadline. Just to have a look, look. 
Yep. It's a nervous wait. See what she reckons. We're all good to go. She's happy with that. We're on our way. 1,400 kilometres still stand between Cameron and his destination. If we don't get in by Sunday, it means we have to wait a full week until the following Sunday to go back in. But with a load one metre wider than the entire road, he can't push too hard. Now we're just coming up to Majura Pass, which is a, it's a climb up out of the basin. Up ahead, a steep hill to pull him back even more. This is where it becomes a bit trickier. With 130 tonnes to drag single-handedly... We'll just crawl up the hill. You're probably at about 5 to 10 k's an hour. It's a long, slow climb. We've moved to the top of the path. Lose traction or miss a gear. So we're in second gear there, about 10 k's an hour. And it would be near impossible to get moving again. Something went wrong. It'd be a disaster, I think. Over the summit, Cameron's keen to see how his 80-wheel trailer is holding up. Let's get out and check all the tyres. Hopefully everything's good and we can just keep rolling. We can't afford to really lose too much time. Yeah, that's not a good sound. Oh, I'm precious. We better change that so we can keep going. Better luck we don't lose too much daylight. <laughs> it might mean we can't make the parking bay we need to make. Cameron's not allowed to travel at night. His overnight rest stops have all been planned ahead. Fall short of his next one. And finding a parking spot for this massive load could be an impossible task. Better get into it. Clinging to the edge of New Zealand's biggest mountain range, Sludge and his 45 passengers are halfway through a gruelling climb. We're doing 20 kilometres an hour, but she's fair working. On one side, a sheer drop. Not much spare room. On the other, a jagged rock wall. Just got to be careful we don't hit the rocks with the side of the crate as it leans over. It's a long way from the flat, hot and dusty conditions Sludge is used to. We've got diesel and unleaded here today. Hauling fuel through the Aussie outback. But after 20 years away, Sludge has returned to his Kiwi roots. Yeah, life's good. To help out his oldest mate, Hoggett. Oh, she's a windy wee road through there, Paul. On some of the dirtiest... Oh, come on. Come on. And most dangerous Whoa. trucking jobs in New Zealand. Come. Oh. He's laid down and we can't get him up. Sludge's latest mission is to deliver cattle from Ranfurly, 560 kilometres to Greymouth. To get there, he's climbing to nearly 1,000 metres on the highest mountain pass through the Southern Alps, the notorious Arthur's Pass. Oh, that jumps up steep. Miss a gear, and he could come to a grinding halt. He wouldn't want to be spinning any wheels, or he'd be stopping. We've got about 35 tonne on the side. She's loaded up. Pulling hard to come up through here. He's made it up the mountain. Uh, it was a lot steeper than I thought it was going to be. But this job is far from over. 250 kilometres are still left to drive. And Sludge's deadline is only four hours away. Now we're heading for the meatworks. We're running a bit late. If it gets too late, they might not want to unload them and we'll have to go somewhere else to get them off. Finding last minute lodgings for his cattle would be a nightmare. Sludge needs to push on. 
this hill is obviously all slipping down. They get avalanches here all the time. A rockfall could close this narrow mountain pass. In the middle of nowhere. The holdup could be anything from an accident to an avalanche. I don't want to go that traffic this. The only other route across these mountains will take four more hours. Time Sludge doesn't have. On the Tanami track, Steve Graham is dealing with the aftermath of a brutal thunderstorm. Some bits of this road are just a big waterhole right now. He's trying to get through to the remote community of Balgo to collect two massive electrical generators. He's through the wet section and straight back onto bone-crunching track. With every painful bump... Oh, you know about that. Steve's nearer to his destination. Balgo's now on the horizon. Oh, shit, I'm losing air badly. Here we are, 100 yards from the gate, and I've got trouble. Compressed air controls all of the brakes on Steve's truck. Without air, his brakes lock on. After a 3,000 kilometre battle, Steve's stranded and just a few hundred metres from his destination. Brake booster brackets is broken and it's dropped down and it's pulled the airline. With a humongous dump truck perched over him, Heavy haulage expert Cameron Smith is racing to change a flat tyre. He needs to be in Perth on Sunday, two and a half days away, for a road closure to get through the city. Miss that deadline and he'll have to park up for a week. The tyre change goes smoothly, but even an hour has taken a toll. We pulled up probably 150 k short of where we needed to be. Lose that sort of time each day could make it hard for us to get in on that Sunday. Cameron's got 1,200 kilometres to cover in just 48 hours. A smooth run today is critical. Yeah, good to go, Cam. Oversized load. Westbound. Oh, no, we're all out. <laughs> Start of the dirt road. To see what we're in for. It's a 150 kilometre bypass. With it being dirt, it sort of adds a fair bit more time. And making things harder a series of challenging climbs. We come up a fairly steep jump up. Hopefully we get up. With 130 tonnes, pulling him backwards, Cameron's biggest worry is losing traction. I hope that this one hasn't got loose gravel or corrugation, otherwise we might not get up. If you're going to break traction, you're going to break it at the worst possible point, which will be right on the peak. Try and keep the revs up. Bit of corrugation here, which can be a little bit of a drama. Probably only halfway up. Starting to slip. Fingers crossed we make it. Uh oh. He's losing speed. It's not looking good. Up. And now he's losing grip. Uh, I'm well spinning. In New Zealand, Sludge's time critical cattle run has been stalled by a mystery roadblock. I don't know what the f go with that traffic, this. 
wait here any longer and he risks missing his six o'clock deadline. Here we go. We're off. Roadworks are the cause of the delay. She's a bit narrow down through that bit. Sludge has three hours to drive 200 kilometres. Strap yourself in and hang on. Here for a good time, not a long time. On a road not built for speed. Yeah, we've got to make sure we get these hamburgers upright. Nor comfort. You wouldn't want to be getting car sick. You're hanging out spewing. Jesus Christ. I'm going to run down this valley. It's going to be pretty windy and just tight down through here, I think. And now, more roadworks. <laughs> to get through these mountains, Sludge needs to follow this high river gorge. Holy sh look at that! What a bloody rip of you that is. Basically, we're just going across the top of the river um, from one valley to another. Pretty spectacular, I reckon. While the view is breathtaking, it's a 35-metre drop to the water below. Sludge's wheels are just centimetres from the rail. There's a bit narrow here. No, come back if you fall over there. He needs to be looking ahead, but behind, a car is threatening to overtake. The f***ing goat or what? The indecisive driver makes his move, distracting Sludge at the worst time. Whoa. Nah, we've come to a stop and we will spin it. Cameron Smith is battling to get his massive dump truck up a steep dirt hill. I just have to come back. Bit of a shame, we're about three quarters of the way up there. His drive tyres have lost traction on the loose gravel. He can't go any further forward. So, yeah, unfortunately, we have to roll back down. The plan is to get another run up. But reversing an eight metre wide load over hundreds of metres is a tricky manoeuvre. I can't sort of see, so I'm relying on someone else trying to keep us in the middle of the road there, mate. Yeah, let's just see how we go here. To stand a chance this time, Cameron needs to move the load forward. So I'll just lower this suspension down. I'll just transfer some weight. More weight over his truck's drive tyres should mean more traction. All right, we'll try that. Fingers crossed this time. Probably about 30 metres off where I got stuck, so this is a crucial part. Would have earned a beer for the day if we get through this. Cameron is now moving away from the outback and into farmland. With every passing kilometre, the trees are getting bigger, creating a bigger hazard for his load. Just coming up to some overhead trees, so hopefully we don't hit them. With a $3 million price tag, this is one load you don't want to damage. We've got to watch the fire suppression system on the right hand side up the top there because if you break one of them hoses off we'll have foam and stuff going everywhere. Uh, it's 
probably about a foot diameter tree branch there that will break things. Yeah, I'll just crawl up to it, mate. Just missed. I wouldn't have liked to have my finger in there. Cameron's deadline is now within his grasp. But as he gets closer to Perth, the temperature outside is soaring. It's 43 degrees, so the bitumen's probably 60 or something. And now, one of the steepest hills of his run. Just broken traction on the bitumen. Being that odd a day, starting to rip the bitumen up. The road is melting. Good for a little one to come up. Crossing a narrow bridge in New Zealand's Southern Alps. The f***ing yard or what? An overtaking car is pushing sludge to the edge. For the last 10 kilometres, Sludge has been following a high mountain valley. But now, the most dangerous section of his route. Now we've got to head down. A steep descent to the coast. Look at that. Sludge is nearly 1,000 metres above sea level. Getting his 40-ton truck down the mountain will take nerve and skill. And she's a pretty steep gradient down through here, so we'll be steady, steady. Go too hard on the brakes, and they could burn out and fail. We don't want to be riding the brakes down here, because if we heat them up, we'll be in the shit. He's depending on his gears to slow his truck down. The descent is getting even steeper. She's full on. Miss a gear, and his truckload of 45 cattle could freewheel out of control. Within a stone's throw of his pickup point in Balgo, Steve Graham's stuck. Brake rooster brackets is broken and it's dropped down and it's pulled the airline. His air system has a leak and it's locked on all his brakes. It's just those last few corrugations smashed the bracket and broke the bracket off. These sort of things happen. He's over 300 kilometres from the nearest mechanic. Steve's only option is to fix this himself. First, he needs to remove the brake booster that's causing the problem. Take that brake out of the equation. And I'm going to rely on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, twenty-one other brakes to do the job. Next, seal off the leaking airline. To see if it's worked, he restarts his truck to build up air pressure. Now, so it'll tell me whether or not I fixed it. I can't hear any air coming out of there with my old ears. She's a temporary fix. Next morning, Steve can turn his attention to the real job at hand, putting the rented side lifter trailer to work. After sacrificing his pillows... I hope people appreciate what I do for them. ..to protect the control panel, Steve's counting on the side lifter to honour its side of the deal. Just can't afford to have it break down. I can't afford to have it not do the job out here at the end of the world. I need to be back in the world before this thing breaks. And this is a bit I always hate, hitting the start button on side lifters. Steve's nerves are understandable. Shut out, doesn't like it. His history with side lifters is long. The sensors shut the legs down. And painful. I'm pissed off about this. This could be a mechanical failure that oh, I really didn't want. That's a good start. But today is looking like the dawn of a new era. We'll go in the bottom hole, mate. That's one on. That's what I'm here for, is getting the next one on. And then I can relax.
All that's left is to drive on this small concrete truck. It doesn't get much simpler. First, he needs to engage the hydraulics on the heavy steel ramps before gently easing them to the ground. And double. Just broken traction on the bitumen. In 40 plus degree heat, Cameron is struggling for grip on a melting road. I'll have to come back a bit, mate. His only option is to drop back and try again. But with his tyres now covered in wet tar and the road a mess, this attempt will be even harder. He needs a miracle, or at least a good Samaritan. A fellow trucker offers him another set of wheels to help pull him up. Heard a bloke stop and give us a hand. Thanks very much, mate. Oh, no worries, mate. Never underestimate a freightliner. With one eye on the sizzling bitumen, yeah, it'll be all right up the hill. Cameron's closing in on Perth and his deadline. Tomorrow is Sunday, the only day of the week he's allowed to enter the city. But the heat isn't done with him yet. They put that curfew on at 10.30 this morning. Yep. After weeks of sweltering temperatures, bushfires are a constant threat. Bad news there that the, the power blokes now have um, just told me that total fire bans kicked in for this region. The fire ban prevents any activities that could set off a bushfire, including lifting power lines. We can't deliver the machine, we're only 95 k's out. With hundreds of low wires in his path, Cameron's stranded until the fire ban is lifted. It's sort of devastating for me to drag the machine from one side of the country to the other and we can't deliver the machine. We have to wait till next Sunday to travel in Perth. Cameron's marooned here for at least another week. Holy sh look at that. Sludge is halfway through a white knuckle ride. Buddy, steep. Crossing New Zealand's biggest mountain range. You go underneath the waterfall. It's beautiful and deadly all at once. She's full on. She's trying to run away. Miss a gear and he risks racing to the bottom. When the crunch came, he pulled it out of the bag. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I've never been down through the end of a truck. Uh, it was a lot steeper than I thought it was going to be. I never thought it would be anything like that. Now we're heading for the meatworks. We're running a bit late. Sludge's delivery point shuts its doors in 45 minutes. He's still got 60 kilometres to cover. We've got to keep pedalling now as we want them off tonight. What a bloody rip of you that is. But with spectacular views comes hordes of tourists. And it's tourist season, so you just got to be a bit careful. To make his deadline... They hear us coming and they don't move over. Sludge is going to have to navigate not only the roads... You've got no idea that you've got a death wish for these push bikers. ..but daredevil cyclists. I don't think we'd pass with him on the bridge. Single riders are bad enough. But then up ahead. You've got to be shitting me. It's as wide as a small car. On a blind corner, Sludge is pushed to the danger zone. <laughs> In the remote settlement of Balgo, Steve Graham's trailer ramp has come crashing down around him. There is a pin coming out here. They just rattle loose with something. I have to find something to get in there. This thing could have bashed me on the head and killed me if I hadn't have been 
out of the way. I was lucky. The pin holding the ramp to its hydraulic lifting arm has fallen out somewhere along the Tanami track. Without it, the ramp can't lift and Steve can't move. We'll get the machine on first and so don't worry about how to get the ramp up. While the truck is easily loaded, to get the ramp back up, Steve needs another pin and some powerful lifting. They weigh about 200 plus kilos. He might just be in luck. Here comes Errol now. My waiting time's nearly over. I am a lucky truckie. Belgo Crane Hire is here now. If you take the weight, then you can possibly get underneath and just yep. guide it on for me. Should be a quick fix. Time for some bush mechanics. With the crane, they line up the holes on the ramp. A bit more, mate. Now to hammer home a steel bar from Steve's toolbox. Try it, try it, do you reckon? Yeah. The moment of truth. It's not the right pin, but the job's done. And that'll get it to town where we've got the correct gear. My shoulder. Steve needs to get moving. In six days' time, he's having surgery on his injured shoulder. They go in one side keyhole and they open up the other side and go in through the muscle and reattach the, the tendon in several places. The operation's in Perth, a four-day drive away, and Steve's still got multiple loads to pick up and drop off. Get all this nonsense sorted out with this back load and this bloody side lifter and get myself in hospital for a Thursday. I didn't want to have to drive this truck to the hospital, basically get out and walk in. Next morning, Steve's ready for his final piece of freight before he can push for home. There's just one problem. The side lifter won't start. So here I am again with a side lifter that's let me down. I'm a bit friggin' sad about that. With his surgery looming, Steve can't afford to lose any more time on repairs. I might have to leave some freight behind. It's a bloody nuisance, it's a real headache. And I have to get that shifted at my own cost on another truck on another day. Outside Perth, Cameron Smith has been stranded for an entire week in extreme heat. We've been parked in this beautiful parking bay here since last Saturday. Most of the week's been 44. And we've had temperatures up at 46 degrees. Hot weather and the threat of bushfires has caused a fire ban restricting any work with power lines. But Cameron's truck needs power lines shifted to reach its destination. Hopefully tomorrow's not another total fire ban, otherwise we're stuck here for another week, so I don't know whether I could handle that. Next morning, good news, the ban has been lifted. This morning's looking all right weather-wise. It'll be good to get going. If the temperature climbs too high, the ban could be put back in place. He needs to make this delivery fast. Yeah, I'm on the road. Yeah, we've just got a couple of wires down here that we've got to lift, so... There we go. I'll just go over to the, the right. No, you clean that one. We've just got to do the 6Ks now, looking under the power line. We've got to do 10Ks now over bridges. So. Everything adds up to a long day. And now, the reason for the Sunday deadline. Closing down the Tonkin Highway, one of Perth's biggest arteries. Uh, this time of the day, the Tonkin Highway is fairly busy with traffic. Yeah, you guys can move up here if you want. 
pilots have just given me the word that they've got it blocked, so major highway being 100 kg, you don't want any accidents. Yeah, wheels on, gas up the struts and should be able to roll her off. After two weeks and 2,600 hard kilometres, these are the last 30 metres of a truly mammoth job. Cameron's mission is complete. Finally unloaded the machine and all worked out all right in the end. Go to the next job. Hopefully there's no total vibe in. You've got to be shitting me. Oh, my God. Two of them sitting in it. A slow-moving bicycle has forced Sludge to overtake on a long, blind corner. Oh. Two trucks come upon each other. They look like mince meat out in the bush. But now, Sludge can start to relax. We're on the home run now. We're here, thank Christ. And 20 minutes before closing time. Let's get these babies off. It's been one of the toughest weeks of his trucking life. We're getting there. But Sludge has taken it all in his stride. Well, that was a pretty good experience. A bit different. Getting his hands dirty. Now I know why I gave up carton stock. Liquid never stopped. To conquer a mountain. Well, and hard to come up through here. And deliver the goods. It's nice just to come and help a mate out and have a good look around. It's Sludge's last night, and every man and his dog have come to say thanks. <laughs> Finally, Sludge can be let off the leash. You started this! Well, I think we picked the best time to be in New Zealand. Good old Hogan! I love it here. I miss a lot of things about it. But uh, Australia's home. These f***ing side lifters, they drive me mad. In Broome, Steve's bad luck with side lifter trailers has returned. The engine won't turn over. Now look for loose wire. Might be something as simple as that. Without it working, he can't rearrange his load and collect more freight. All these things are rattled loose in here. I've put pillows in here. I've travelled the road slowly. Steve has an idea. That screw at the back there. Yeah. I'm trying to jump start the uh, motor. He's looking to bypass the ignition and hotwire the side lifter. You go across that screwdriver to the big terminal, you should have a start. I don't hold him. You've got smarter than us around here. And his badly injured shoulder isn't helping. For oh, Christ's sake, I can't. But my problem is I can't lift up my arm. Maybe you weren't getting it just right, mate. Finally, he can put the side lifter to work. Putting this out to 40 feet, and then I can put these two units on this trailer. Next job, offload the small concrete truck and load a cherry picker. You right to drive this thing? Oh, I've never driven it before. Nor have I. <laughs> All right. All right. Got no idea how to drive the thing. Come 
emergency stop button if you hit some people. Ah, right, I'll try and start it now. It's not flat in the battery. It's not Steve's day. It's just costing money in every direction because things won't go. Time for some lateral thinking. I'm just about over this trip. I've had airlines blow. I'm losing a lot of air. Hydraulic rams blow. The higher gear won't start. And I'm over it. It's been a tough trip. But now Steve can start the long road home. The only thing to do now is get out of here. To make his shoulder operation, he's got four and a half days to drive two and a half thousand kilometres. Yeah, I don't need any problems on the road. I need a nice, straight run. Home is now just up ahead. One final obstacle stands between Steve and the end of yet another epic job. His nemesis, the side lifter trailer. I've got to get it dehired in good order. The side lifter has to be going. Steve has a $30,000 excess hanging over his head. If the hire company isn't happy, he'll have a massive debt to pay. It's filled up, Luke. It's full of fuel. But anyway, you check it. All good, mate. I'm a relieved man. Yeah, I want my pillows back. They're happy, and I'm happy. The trailer's back. The job's finished. That, that's good. That's good. Next stop, the surgeon, for a tune-up on his shoulder. For this die-hard trucker, the hardest part of the procedure will be staying away from his truck. I couldn't remember the last time I didn't drive a truck for three or four months. A long time ago. There's things I can do, one armed. I imagine. One-handed fishing. That's what grandchildren are for. There we have it. Heading to the desert. Michael King delivers dangerous loads to dangerous places. That's where all the fun starts. Can't see through the dust. In charge of a 100-tonne road tanker full of thousands of litres of hazardous industrial chemicals. What we class as dangerous goods or hardcore chemicals that are going to affect either people or the environment. If I make a serious mistake, that's about the last piece of shit we need today, I'm out of a job. Supplying mine sites in the Great Sandy Desert. The worst thing you'd hit is a camel. With a hike them, they just somersault straight back over the bonnet on you. And the danger doesn't end when the journey's over. We put the acid seat on in the red hot sun and we'll start unloading. In the scorching heat, Michael has to suit up for the most important part. We've got one trailer to go and tell you what, this ain't looking very funny out here now. Delivering the product. Michael lives more than 2,000 kilometres south on a rural property near Geraldton. It's a welcome retreat from one of the toughest trucking jobs there is. Stay there, you. When we go to the mine, the last 500 k's of it, we've got about 120 odd k's of dirt. It's all up through hills, sharp, scaly rock and that. And we cross over like three or four major rivers. A couple of those rivers are actually got water still running over the crossing. When you're transporting toxic loads, you're never far from danger. If it's nasty and it's dangerous, fluoros don't protect you, steel cap boots don't protect you, gloves don't protect you. Nothing protects you, just use your brains and common sense. That's what protects you. That, that's as simple as it goes. Michael's about to set off on another run from his base at Geraldton, picking up his load in Perth, then back up north to Caratha and across to a copper mine in the Great Sandy Desert. All up, close to a 4,000 kilometre round trip. I'll just go for a bit of a tyre kick and we'll be on our way. The truck is a triple road train. Three tankers, 50 metres long, capable of carrying 43,000 litres of sodium hydroxide, also known as caustic soda. It's extremely corrosive. Spill a teaspoon of this super powerful industrial cleaner on you and it will burn your skin. The old visual inspection is about the best thing that you can ever do with trucks. 
When you're carrying a load as hazardous as this into the desert wilderness, the pre-journey truck inspection is not something you rush. Poke your head in every corner. Everything you can find, poke your head in too. On his empty run down to Perth, Michael gets used to navigating a 50-metre road train on busy highways. The main essence with these things is just keep a long way away from motor cars. The driving is tough enough. It's a dangerous thing. I mean, I think people are atrocious. But it's the loading that's weighing on his mind. It'll be the time when acid seats go on and the concentration goes to about 500%. Caustic soda is a deadly industrial cleaning agent. This is where the full protective gear comes into play. There's no half measures, there's no put a little bit of this on and put a little bit of that on. You either put the lot on, or, or there's the gate, you get out the gate and keep going, you know. In Western Australia, Sludge's faithful truck, the Phantom, should be out in the fields, filling farmers' fuel tanks, earning him a living. Well, fire, fuel, fire, boom. Instead, one little cock up like I had has cost me eight weeks off the road. It's in the workshop, costing him thousands and many sleepless nights. I've still got to make all my payments, my house payments, all my trailer payments, my truck payments. Sludge was on a routine delivery job when disaster struck. I was turning around in a, in a paddock, probably half asleep, wasn't really watching where I was going, and I basically just drove into the road base and um, hit the bottom of the ball bar and then just tore everything off. The front of the Phantom took a hammer in. Pretty much, um, it's broken all the mounts off, all the bottoms off. It's bent all this front cross member that the radiator sits on, so you can see here, it's all twisted forward, so it's kinked the radiator and everything. Yeah, so it did a nice job of the front of it. A very expensive lapse in concentration. I'd say around the $30,000, $40,000 mark by the time we get it all fixed and painted. A few days later, Sludge's business took another hit. Oh, Anyhow, a nice morning turned into a shit morning. When his second truck broke down. Get rid of them. At the moment, we've got them both off the road, and I've never, ever had them both off the road at the same time, so the pain was well and truly on. New red boat anchor. She went pop. 780,000 k's, which is not good. New generation motor should be doing million plus k's. Really bad. Downtime costs sludge more than $2,000 a day. There's one of our new tanks. And his truck problems have delayed a new money making scheme he's come up with. And they've been waiting for eight weeks for these tanks. To get the jump on the big fuel supplying companies, he's offering a free 27,000 litre fuel tank delivered to the farm to encourage them to stay loyal. Us finding these tanks and giving them to farmers, it's a big thing for our business because it picks the pace up and it makes it quicker and easier for us. Sludge needs the Phantom fixed and back on the road quickly. I will suffer now for the next six months trying to get back on my feet again. He needs to deliver the tanks and fill them before the seeding season begins in two weeks. The whole fleet off the road has just killed us, so the next few weeks is going to be hot to trot to try and catch up. We've got to go. We've got to get going if we're going to do our deadline. Come on, Goose. 4,000 kilometres away in Launceston, Tasmania. We'll get moving. Beekeeping truck driver Lindsay Burke has to get to his hives urgently. The farmer just rang me this morning. We've got the pressure under us. We've got to get a lot of hives off. Lindsay has 80,000 of his bees pollinating a carrot crop for a local farmer. We've got to get out of the site as quickly as we can. But it's time to move them on. A highly specialised and dangerous job. They're going to defend their hive, that's their home, and we're going to do something extreme to them. We're going to load them onto a truck and move them somewhere. A job requiring expert know-how, vigilance and experience. Now, I've been doing it all my life, so I'm trained for it, thank goodness. We give them a little bit of smell of smoke. Smoking the bees calms them, giving the beekeepers a short window in which to move the hive safely. Okay, Dave, we're ready then. It's a big operation with big dollars at stake. The first one's the most important. The bees make some of the most expensive honey in the world. 
From this field, Lindsay faces a long and torturous drive high into the ancient rainforests in Tasmania's mountain country. Oh, gee. Yeah, it's very dangerous. Negotiating terrible forest tracks. Ah, they'll all be shook up. You better put your veil on when we get up here. To deliver the bees to their next work site. Oh, I don't want to damage my track. Flowering deep in the forest at this time of year are the sought-after leatherwood trees. This is what it's all about. Beautiful leatherwoods like this. Found only in a small area of western Tasmania, the trees provide the nectar for Lindsay's prized honey. This honey has been voted the best honey in the world at the World Beekeeping Congress. In high demand across the globe, leatherwood honey is big business. Each one of those is 10 kilos of honey, and we get $10 a kilo for it, so that's $100 a super. There's one sting in my eye. But he earns every cent. In your eyes, the worst place. Bees in Australia are responsible for more deaths than the continent's long list of deadly spiders and snakes. It's not like normal livestock. If anything happens, they're lethal to people. Very dangerous. Lindsay's journey today is from near Launceston, heading southwest to drop his bees at a forest site near the town of Corinna, then on to Mount Black to pick up honey to deliver to a processing plant at Sheffield. But with just the one truck, there's barely enough room for all the hives. Lindsay will have to go high. If a stack topples, tens of thousands of dollars could be lost and he'll be facing a very angry swarm of bees. Not bad. I, I didn't think we were going to get them all on, but we had to put a few up top to do it. The tricky loading is only half the job. Now Lindsay's ready to hit the road. High load like that, rough roads. Um, the truck sways a bit, so we've got to make sure that that keeps steady. I've got a long way to go, four and a half hours. His first challenge, the narrow winding lanes through the rainforest. It's just dangerous coming into these blind corners. Loaded so high, he has to avoid low-hanging branches and stick to the middle of the road. People just don't expect that you'll have a heavily laden bee truck coming at you. You're pumping liquid? that something will get splashed sooner or later, as long as it's not me. Kitted up in his acid suit, Michael King set to load his deadly liquid cargo. Obviously, the things you don't want is to be burned. You don't want to get the shit on you. 43,000 litres of highly toxic caustic soda. Right now, we're going to batch up a load, and it's very helpful if you bring your glasses so you can see what you're doing here. And we should have a start if everything goes all right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pumping now, it's, uh, um, everything's right. We just can't leave here, we've got a, a dead man button on this. He's a truckie who has to watch the load as much as he watches the road. So if something happens to you, you have a heart attack or something here, if you don't press the dead man, it, you, you stay, it'll go off in a second. So yeah, it's the dead man. Michael has to hit the dead man's button every two minutes or the alarm goes off. When you're pumping this stuff, you still don't rest. You don't go off and make a cup of tea and you just concentrate in case something's gone, you know, something's happened. You need to know what's going to jump up and bite you. With his tankers full, Michael's now in charge of a seriously heavy truck. 65 tonne of product, but we're now a 100 tonne road train. It's about the best part of the day when you get this off. Now he has to get it to a mine in the middle of a desert. We've got the 1700 k's to Headland, and then we've got another 500 k's to the desert. But there is supposed to be a heap of rain due in on, um, on Saturday. So, look out. We're in for some fun. Away from the chemical plant, Michael can finally shed the last of his protective gear. This is about where the, it feels like you're a dog and you've just had the chain cut and you can go for a run. Look at that. Who else would have a thong tan that good? No one in Australia. It's all weighed up. It's all right. It's all loaded good. So, thumbs up. Let's get the shit out of here. As he heads north, 
Long stretches of straight, empty highway mean Michael eats up the kilometres. There's two days of this ahead. The easy yards. Until a strange noise interrupts. Funny noise uh, has just come up, but this is its first run. After two costly months off the road, Sludge's Phantom is back from the mechanics looking brand new. Hopefully there will be nothing wrong with it. Ready for its first serious test. A couple of tanks I bought for farmers of ours. Uh, they're quite good because they're not a big high load, they're a nice low load. So. Hauling two of these 30,000 litre fuel tanks from Sludge's yard south of Perth, 500 kilometres north to farms near Geraldton. Over the last month or so, I've spent a shitload of money doing tanks and getting things right, and um, I've been outlaying money and not getting anything back. Every month, I've got to make X amount of money, and uh, for the last six or eight weeks, I've fallen short every week, so it starts to hurt. Here we go. Sludge has paid more than $30,000 for the repair. Whoops. But there's always a concern something may have been missed. You never know what could happen. Ah, you said nice to be back in the old girl again. We'll get her up to the edge of town, just have a look and make sure nothing's rattled loose under the front of her. We'll have a look, make sure there's nothing wrong, no coolant or anything blowing out the bottom of her. Let's go and have a look at the big girl. It's not the stop he was hoping for. Oh, I've got a bit of an oil leak. I'm just not sure what the hell's leaking, actually, but I'll wipe everything down. That's a bit of a worry. You just never know with an oil leak. It could be just a little thing, but it could just go... With hoses and that, they just go push, and that's it. Dumps all the oil, and you run out of whatever. With the Phantom earning money for the first time in weeks, Sludge can't afford to sit and wait for a mechanic. He decides to take the risk, fix it later, drive on. but not for long. Ah, oh, the water buzzer just went off. Oh, I might have to pull up. All the gauges are right. I don't know whether it's a sensor because I've had to truck apart or... I'm just going to pull in here and have a little bit of a look. Let's have a quick look at that water. See why that engine light's on. In Tasmania, beekeeper Lindsay Burke is grinding his way along a steep mountain road. Very careful descending into a place like this because we have tourists on the same roads and they are not expecting a larger truck coming around a little narrow corner. The double stacked load of beehives he's relocating means he needs to stay close to the centre of the road to avoid low hanging branches, trapping a long line of impatient drivers behind him quite frustrating if you're following the slow track up a place like this. Nowhere to drive off, but if I can find a spot, I'll let a few people go. There we are. Well, I see they appreciate it. That's a win for everybody. And they'll say, oh, aren't they lovely people in Tasmania? We must come back again. But Lindsay's routine run on the good roads is about to end. From here, the going gets tough. 
It's worse than I expected. With an overheight low, getting through here is going to take some determined driving. So that's going to hit the hives. If Lindsay takes too long, the pacifying effect of the smoke on the bees will soon wear off. Yeah, all shaking around like that's not good for them. All that, even that one. And they'll try to escape. A mass exodus would be foiled by the protective netting, but they'd be trapped and die. Oh, I don't want to damage my truck. Lindsay's valuable cargo would be decimated. I'm committed now, I have to do it. We've got the bees on, and I'm halfway in, so I have to proceed. With no way to turn around, the only way out is to keep going. In Western Australia, there's a worrying sound coming from one of Michael's trailers. It sounds like it's in, it's in the front here somewhere, but... Pulling three tankers loaded with 65 tonnes of highly corrosive caustic soda, he can't risk even the smallest mechanical failure. He needs to stop and investigate immediately. Got a real strange noise that's just come up. I'm just not sure at the moment. So, uh, when you start getting funny noises, you just get to them as quick as you can. Come on, where is it? There's no obvious problem, which troubles him even more. It's always a worry when you don't really find the total problem. But I'm thinking because I could hear it very plainly from here, that it's this air drain that's going off that's making this squeaking noise. You absolutely hate it when you find a hear a noise and you, 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 you don't really have an answer to it. That's sort of... You really want... It's a little bit of a mystery. I think it's going to be that air dryer. Let's keep going for a little bit and see. With the sound suddenly gone, he now has to worry about cyclonic inland rain that's flooding into normally docile rivers between him and his destination. Hello, we're in full flood. Look at that. You've got a flood and a dust storm all at the same time. What a rarity. Absolute rarity. This is a big dust storm that's just coming through. Nature is making her presence felt. That, that river, I've never seen it that full of my life. So all, all that area is certainly getting some good rain now at the moment. We're just coming up now to the big river. This is the main um, Gascoigne River. Oh, she's a beauty. She's full. Look at that. That's not a raging river. What's a raging river? Look at it, eh? Chocker block. What a magnificent sight. Absolutely terrific. Michael's not even halfway, and as he heads further north, he's driving into trouble. The weather's getting a little bit frightening now because it's all raining inland. So as we get a little bit further up here, we'll start crossing the rivers that run north, and that's when we don't want to see this stuff out here on our right-hand side. That's it. Got the bonnet. Sludge has had to make a pit stop after an engine warning light lit up on his dashboard. Quick. All new radiator and everything in there. He's hoping it's not a fault with the new $8,000 radiator he's just had fitted. They ain't cheap. That's not the problem. Got lots of red stuff in there. All right. Must be a wire somewhere playing up. 
in here. It's uh, not what I thought it was. Back on the road, Sludge's frustrations continue. He's trying to call his customer to check what plans are in place to lift the giant tank off the trailer when he delivers it. One of the customers I'm going to, I can't get hold on the phone, I've been trying for a couple of hours. Each tank is close to 15 metres long and weighs more than 10 tonnes. Not easy to move without a heavy duty forklift or crane. I don't have time to bug around. I've got to keep moving because I've got to be at another customer's place to unload the front ones. With no word from the customer, Sludge is forced to change his plans. We're um, going to do this backwards. We're uh, going to our second customer first because the other guy hasn't got his loaders ready. So just going to drop a trailer here where we go and unload one and then we'll come back here and pick it up. Our manager. The plan is to use forks to lift the tank off. Ooh, it's bigger than I thought. I bet you the tank's bigger than he thought. But Sludge isn't sure it's going to have the grunt to do the job safely. But I've got a feeling that this thing's not going to lift it, so we're going to have to try and try and get it on the Manitou and then slide it down onto the ground without damaging anything. So we'll see how we go. The tank's long and the forks are narrow. We're going to um, put a strap through. Hang on. Hook her onto the forks and just so that it doesn't roll off when he lifts her up. Can they support something this big? We'll soon find out. It's going to be a balancing act. Get under as far as we can. I'll let her go. Here we go, the minute of truth. We'll look out for the tractor landing on its head. That's it, yep, whoop, slide yourself right in. Go right in. Come on, you. F in Tasmania, Lindsay's struggling along a bumpy mountain track. This track's so bad that I think this is the last time I'll bring this truck in here. Now, oh, I've lost a bit of traction on that. There we go. Bring it, bring it back. Oh, geez. Now, let me think here. Put on the hill start. Get down low. Here we go. Well, oh, she didn't want to do that, did she? How are you going back there, Lindsay? Struggling because the track's so narrow. You must have had trouble as well. I took a fly, that's for sure. You see, the thing is, if I got into trouble here, I'd really be in trouble. That's why I've sent a four-wheel drive truck in ahead of me, so it could pull me out and pull me straight again if we had to. To get into the real good spots, the good sites, you've got to negotiate these terrible access points. After a long, tough slog through the bush... They're full of honey, mate. Oh, that's some good news then. The beehives already on site have produced a good harvest. So, does it make it all worthwhile? Sure does. <laughs> for Lindsay, it's confirmation that he's picked the perfect spot for the new hives. Look at the bees hanging out. That's a good indication that we've got honey. Here we are. For a beekeeper, this is the best site you can see. While the transported hives are offloaded to their new location, oh, look at this. Lindsay takes the opportunity to inspect the existing hives. This is our first leather of the season. Look at that. The hives are full, beautiful honey's coming in, and a lot more to come, so a really good day for us. But Lindsay doesn't have time to savour the sweet success. Now he has to race to a second inaccessible site to collect full frames of honey and get them to the processing plant. Our beekeepers have been to other sites for me 
and uh, they've taken the honey off those. We're going to bring it in and we'll put it on this larger truck and take it to Sheffield. The reports I've had, there's going to be uh, a good showing up here, so that's what it's all about. And they're all here waiting for me now. I'm late. Like the first site, this area is a cramped clearing in the forest, making Lindsay's job almost impossible. Can you move it up for me and I'll load it up? Thank you. Six trucks in this B site. There's not enough room anywhere, so we're going to have to be careful where we put them. I want to get away from here at 2 o'clock if I can. Take me hours to get to Sheffield. The key's in it. Just run forward, do anything. With the clock ticking, Lindsay needs this load to go smoothly. Oh, no! No, Lewis, you can't do that. Six rivers here weren't running the other day. In the north of Western Australia, with 43,000 litres of a toxic chemical on board, tanker driver Michael King is closely monitoring river levels. We're going to be screwed, I think, because the rain's in Port Edland, rain's in Caratha. A cyclone in the top end has rivers running wild, threatening to cut the main highways. This country's already wet. Everything is wet from here up, so there's no rain or rise and that these, these roads are not going to flood somewhere, I'd say. As the devil speaks, we don't go very far and we're washing wheels. These flats here are like just one big one that's jammed in between two hills. And it doesn't get very deep here. It's sort of half a metre, it goes really quick. But when we get out to Barbel Bar slash Ribbon Hills Road, th th those rivers, uh, no exaggeration, they, they can be 15 or 20 metres deep. A bit of water coming down it now. Yeah, that's um, last time I come up here, it wasn't much more than the trickle. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's got a flow in it this time. So I'm a worried man now. Michael's keeping a nervous eye on the skies. He's driving right into the worst of the weather. Certainly not getting the funny look at this lot. I really am shitting myself now. At a truck stop past Port Hedland, Michael gets an update on the cyclone situation. Uh, yeah, it's up off Karanara and starts heading south towards Broome. Saturday it's definitely here at Port Hedland, but it's going to push rain in front of it out through where you're going or tomorrow well, night. But we're, we're going to beat that. Big boom bombs up here now, so um, let, let's just make a move, eh, and hope we don't starve or die or get washed away. We'll, we'll hammer for sure. The drive ahead is shaping up as a nightmare. It's probably the best storm you're going to see in your life. You look all the way around there, it's got a cloud in the sky. Everywhere we've got to go, there's nothing but crap. <laughs> Absolute crap. In Tasmania, Lindsay Burke's team is racing the clock to get the valuable leatherwood honey to the processing plant. See, I don't even care whether you get these finished or not. I've got to get everything on there that I can and get out of it. But a congested workplace and a few late trucks have him behind schedule. We may have to stick that truck out of the way for us. Right, I need to move the nets up the back for me. I'm under a little bit of pressure now because I have to drive slowly and carefully because I've got a big weight on here and I don't want to lose anything and uh, I've got to get there before everyone knocks off. Are we ready? We've got to get moving. After a big group effort... Right Righto, boys, thank you. ..the loading is done. There you go. We're all clear and we're off. With the Tasmanian leatherwood honey season lasting only two months of the year, every delivery counts. Lindsay needs to make it to the extraction plant before close of business. But first he has to get his fully loaded truck down the mountain. I've got to get there, but I don't want to be late, but I can't hurry. I've got to take my time and let the truck do the work. Look at all these tourists. Impatient tourists aren't always ready for a slow-moving bee truck on winding roads. Some corners will come up quite quickly. You've got to be ready for that. Up ahead, a 180-degree turn in the road. We've got another tight bend here at the end of this straight, just around the corner. Something I'm going to have to be very careful of and make sure that the person behind me doesn't try and shoot through. 
but approaching the bend. I can't look at this. This is what happens. One after the other. Oh, gee. Drivers overtake into a blind corner. Yeah, it's very dangerous. The last of the kamikaze traffic is through. Lindsay now has to make sure he gets to the factory before the gate closes and before his precious cargo of honey becomes a target for a swarm of thieves. The resident the bees, the bees that live in the town will smell it and once they sample a little bit of it, they, they steal a little bit, then they'll go back to all their friends and they'll all come. So we've got to be pretty, pretty quick. He's down safely. But if the plant is shut, he'll be left stranded with a truckload of honey and the threat from the robber bees. We're just stretching the limits here a little bit. Hopefully they're still operating. That's wonderful. Wonderful to get here with a load of honey. Lindsay's made it just in time. Good load, Mark. Tires are half flat. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, this unique honey can be extracted, ready to be shipped to thousands of people around the world. Gee, look at that. The best honey in the whole world, and it comes from our small state here in Tasmania. Same thing tomorrow. <laughs> I live for it. Just driving a little bit. Sludge is struggling to lift a two metre high, go right in, 15 metre long fuel tank off his trailer. See if you can tip it back a bit. Using a forklift. Come on, you. F nah, you it's looking like a mismatch. Right on the limit now. It's not just size and shape that matter. Even empty, the solid metal tank weighs 10 tonnes. It's right on the end of it. Oh, I think you've got it, you know. You have. I know. You made that truck <laughs> It may be in the air, but the forklift driver has to hold it there while Sludge drives the trailer out from under it. Mission accomplished. That's good. One tank off. One to go. But Sludge is worried about the next drop. So, mate. Catch up with you. Tanks tank, you never know how easy they're going to be to get off or how hard they're going to be to get off. He's had trouble getting through to the customer. Beautiful. As easy as that. Straight in, hook it up and gone. He doesn't know what sort of unloading equipment will be waiting when he arrives. A lot of the guys nowadays have got good loaders, but some have still got shit. It's 100 kilometres to the next drop. And if things go wrong out here, help will be a long way off. Yep, I don't know what they're going to have here. What do we got? What do we got? But after the long trek up to the farm sheds, a pleasant surprise. Oh, nice lighter. Nice lighter. I ain't going to let this one fall off. She's going to be a piece of f Get this puppy off. But even with plenty of lifting power, it's still a tricky manoeuvre. Right up and at him. That's her. I'll just pull anyway. Right. That's another happy customer. He'll have that up and running for us by seeding time. Sludge expects his free tank for customers idea to make his fuel delivery easier. Instead of pulling up and filling little tanks, which takes us an hour, we can blow off 8,000 litres in five or ten minutes. After eight weeks in pieces, Sludge now has the Phantom back and running. This has been its first big week of um, being out on the road. We've got a couple of little problems with it, but, you know, warning sign up on the dash and bits and pieces, but uh, overall, it's uh, been really good. And after lean times, he's suddenly got more work than he can handle. Good evening, Robert. The phone rang rampant farmers, you know, with the rain we've had, they're running out of fuels, and then it all just goes to turmoil. I'll just go up Saturday night. So 
an easy run, which I thought was going to be a nice, easy couple of days, just turned to shit and basically we're just flat out again. So you never know what's around the corner, and that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Should be exciting. Should be exciting. As he heads north, still worrying about a distant cyclone, Michael King is seeing more water and less road. This is a big river, this one here. With three tankers in tow, he's having to drastically cut his speed and proceed with extreme caution. These floodways here cover off a lot of land, but they're nice and long. Hauling three tankers full of toxic chemical, he backs it right off in the water. Don't charge it, just basically not, not much faster than I'd ought to get through. Before he hits the desert proper, Michael has a mountain range to deal with. There's a f***ing big hills around here, and they, I think they got the biggest one here, so th this is just as much pain going down as what it is to get up. Something goes wrong going downhill, it just takes off and you've you got no control. While the skies are blue, there's still water on the road. And this section here, all the skid marks here, that's where all these trucks have aquaplane and then shot off down the river. Righto, welcome to the world of heading to the desert. This is the mine turn off. Traffic on the road to the mine is minimal. But when there's another truck to share the road with, it's a maximum length monster. That, that bloke at least um, had, had the good manners to sort of stop and give us the right way to get up the hill. Yeah, brand new tyres on and they expect to drive over that shit there. No, no. Can't see through the dust. Yes, yeah, take it steady, have another day out here. Loaded. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're getting paid to go there for. Yeah, no, you're good there, mate. Roger, thank you. After a marathon four-day drive, Michael arrives at the copper and gold mine, a world away from civilization. We're here. Hallelujah. But before he drives through the gate, there's one last stop required. We're going to pull up here and dust all these wheels. It's a bit like wiping your boots to go into someone's house. We're going to leave all the mess out here. A courtesy. Even in the great sandy desert, they don't like dust. Michael has carted 43,000 litres of caustic soda from Perth 2,000 kilometres into the scorching wilderness. It's the last place you'd want to pull on a suit. But with a toxic cargo to transfer, off we go. Michael has no choice. I'm going to put this on again. Now there's only one thing left to do. We'll get this shit off and get the hell out of here. I think and that'll be the answer that lot. In the remote heart of Australia, one man leads a crusade to keep the outback clean. The king of scrap, Russell Madonna. We're quite passionate about recycling things. When he's not crushing cars for a dollar, Russell's road train is a lifeline for isolated settlements. Where we're off to is a place called Kintour. It's, uh, it's on the West Australian border. Uh, we're taking out two shipping containers that have been modified. They're self-contained with their own bathroom, kitchen, bedroom. The brand new container homes are vital infrastructure for a community of less than 500 people. Russell's hauling three fully loaded trailers from Alice Springs, over 500 kilometres to the tiny desert community of Kintor. This trip is a baptism of fire for Russell's new rig. It caught my eye when I saw it was up for sale and um, just couldn't help myself, I just had to grab it. He's just forked out big bucks for a second-hand truck. Is that a full refurbish only a few years ago? Especially modified for the Outback. 
with six fuel tanks and 600 horsepower. It's a lot shinier. It's had fresh paint, bigger in the sleeper compartment, and the horsepower. This trip will push his new truck to its limits. We are going to have three trailers. We're going to be out on some dirt roads, pushing through some sand. Builder Paul Beal has transformed the two shipping containers into living quarters. The customer wants them out there in the same condition as they leave here. And... The sturdy new homes hide a fragile interior. The design system here is for a house, not designed to travel down the road. You can transport them, but you can transport them nicely and get them there in the same condition. Russell's first challenge is loading the five and a half ton portable homes safely onto the trailers. This is the crane we're going to use to do the whole job. It fits up on uh, one of my trailers nicely. It's not beyond the capability of this crane, but it's on, on sort of the limit. It's a delicate operation. If Russell and Paul miscalculate, the 16-ton crane can topple and a $70,000 portable home could be destroyed. She lifted off. 5'7 on the hook now. As Russell manoeuvres the giant cargo into position, a sudden gust of wind catches the container. Whoa. Pushing the crane to tipping point. Hey, look out, tipping up. Just following this detour around town here, so I'm not sure where we're going. In central New South Wales, trucker and father of four, Justin Harrison, is trapped in a maze of detours. Okay, mate, your lack of signage. The other end has brought us back here, mate. On an urgent delivery, he's hauling a 30-ton loader for an earth-moving company. I can't afford to have any delays with this machine because they want to use it first thing tomorrow morning. I've got no idea where we're going. They haven't got no more detour signs out. From his hometown in Prima, New South Wales, Justin will travel almost 1,800 kilometres to Border Town and Adelaide in South Australia. You getting in? No. The hardest bit's when you're first getting ready to go away and then sort of the last day when you're on your way home is sort of when the pressure's off because you know you're going to be back to see them and you sort of get an extra bloody, like a second wind, I suppose, to, to get home. Love you. For the hard-working trucker, leaving his family is the toughest job of all. Uh, the kids keeping them busy is a bit of a task, but I just arm them up with a quad bike or a horse, or we go hunting or something like that, or fishing, and get to a rodeo. Rodeos are in Justin's DNA. He's competed over a 14-year career as a cowboy. Now, his 15-year-old son, Charlie, is following in Dad's footsteps. Yeah, Dad's really supportive of it. He's helped me out a lot. Really, He don't really get to come and visit me on my rides very much, but he does when he can. Justin has promised Charlie he'll finish this long-haul trucking job and be back in time for his son's next competition. The big thing doing what he's doing, so I, I like to be there. The stakes are high. It's Charlie's first time back in the saddle after a near fatal accident. Thrown by an angry bull, he broke three ribs, bruised his lungs, and suffered severe whiplash. Really striving to get good results, so we've just got to give him every chance he can to come out on top. A final check of the truck and Justin's ready for one last road trip before his son's crucial return to the bull ring. Oh, buddy. Bye, Dad. See you after. See you, mate. On the road, Justin needs everything to go to plan. So, yeah, 
lack of signage has just brought us back around the block. You can't see any more detour signs here. Must be just following our nose. Pretty sure this will take us out around the showground, this road. Justin escapes the town and tries a detour of his own. We're going to head towards a little place called Tooley Buck. There's a bridge there. I'm not exactly sure what the height is on it. And it's a pretty narrow bridge, but I'm hoping we can get across there. And that'll save us probably 100 k's. Bit of a little gamble, but it might pay off to save a fair bit of time. In Lawrence, New South Wales. We just turned down the wrong road. Truck driving fiancés, Ash Bryant and Daryl Armfield. What was that sign back there? What's the sign saying that intersection? Are on a crucial job where every minute counts. That is Round Mountain Road, wasn't it? Mm. But the couple have driven straight into big trouble. Mm, was it? They're lost. Just Boxed in. Can you reverse straight back across? And have no time to spare. Yeah, you've got cars coming from both angles at, at the moment. You're fairly close to this drain here, babe. Yeah. It's far from how their time critical day needed to start. Daryl and Ash are trying to move three loads of cattle from farms in Lawrence and Capeen, New South Wales, to sale yards in Casino. That's 200 cattle and over 500 kilometres of bush roads. This is a pretty rough, bumpy, windy road. A tall order for one day. Yeah, it'll be non-stop and probably too much on for the day, but we'll make it happen. Hey, hey, hey! Everyone's got their own little noise that works. I can't whistle like other fellas. I'm going to make my own noise to get them off. Hey, hey! On this job, Daryl and Ash will need all the tricks they can muster. All three loads have to be delivered before 8 p.m. tonight to comply with rigid curfew rules at the sale yards. It's a very strict deadline. You have to be in by 8 o'clock. It's a juggle. It's a juggle. But, you know, that, that's life. As well as running their seven-truck, 20-staff business, hauling timber and livestock... All over, babe. Like, around in circles. Daryl and Ash have their hands full at home. Do you want your barbecue sauce on the chips? Chips and all gravy sprinkled over here. OK. Daryl has four of his own little people, and I have three of my own, so together we have seven, plus us is nine. My boss told me to have a good day at work, so I went home. <laughs> I like that. It's full on, but it's lots of fun. Working together on the road is a rare chance for the recently engaged couple to have some time alone. We get to go away and, and it's not that romantic, I suppose. We don't go anywhere to wine and dine, but... We don't need to. No, nah, don't need to. You don't get time to. <laughs> but far from enjoying their time together, Daryl and Ash's day is fast going down the drain. I swore that was a ride. I know. I should have looked at the signs that have just turned in there. Thought I've got to do the loads to make the day pay. It's a pretty full on day, you need everything to run right. It's not beyond the capability of this crane, but it's on to the limit. In Alice Springs, Russell McDonough has a $70,000 accommodation block swinging on chains. Five seven on the hook now. But strong winds are making the crane unstable. Hey, look out, it's pepping up. Right up. The crew are struggling with the swinging container. Whoa. It's got one of these ropes hooked up down the other end here. Paul takes over the crane. Well, now I've just got to bring this truck in and we'll settle it down. And Russell slides his truck underneath the precarious five and a half ton load. It's a precision manoeuvre that needs millimetre accuracy. Yeah, 
level. Love it. Russell prepares his rig for over 500 k's of rugged desert roads. So we start putting the whole road train together piece by piece. With two containers and a loading crane, the road train will stretch to 52 metres. That's longer than an Olympic pool. It's a heavy duty load for Russell's maiden voyage in the new truck. A little bit hilly, a little bit windy. You know, we did make a long get a feel for it. We had a couple of air leaks when we initially got it. Uh, I'm just sort of monitoring the water temperature and oil pressure. And the further into this trip we get, the harder the going will be. There's corrugations, there's washouts, there's a whole range of changing conditions on the dirt. It'll be a test for any truck. The first challenge for Russell's new wheels is unpredictable. In the outback, fences are rare and cattle roam free. Dark in colour, those cattle. If it gets any later, it makes them really hard to see. The last thing Russell wants is a head on collision with a half tonne of beef. It can end in tears. That one there. Every hour we can save means we've got an hour to play with along the track if something goes wrong. On the outskirts of Tulibark, New South Wales, trucker Justin Harrison is taking a shortcut. To take a gamble could save us an hour or cost us an hour, so fingers crossed it goes well. Justin's made a promise to his son that he'll make it in time to see him compete. But first, he has to squeeze his oversized load across this narrow bridge. Uh, we just about go over this bridge now. Now yeah, we've only got a few inches either side of the trailer to spare in. Hopefully we made it across there. If not, there'll be a few sparks and um, the truck will be doing a bit of bucket. Get jammed on the bridge and Justin will block a crucial supply route, jeopardise his delivery and blow any chance of making it to his son's rodeo. There's only sort of inches either side of the trailer, so you just got to get your line right. about an hour of the trip going this way, so I was happy that we'd get across there. And... Justin's detour pays off. After a 900 kilometre slog, he finally arrives in Bordertown. But as he prepares to unload the digger, it looks like his luck may have run out. I'm just seeing if we can get in the other side. That bit of wire just broke on the door to get in. And hopefully this door opens. It's the same too. Shit. It's the same. So we've come this far and now we can't get in. Right, no, there we go. That was lucky. The diggers unloaded, but the trailer is causing Justin grief. The hydraulics are failing to retract. Not one to play the game. Which is a bit of a pain in the ass because it's going to take us bloody half an hour to get the thing packed up. And sort of half an hour, I don't really have. I've still got a fair way to go. Might have to get me hammer out, hit myself in the head with it. In northern New South Wales. Running a little bit behind time. Cattle haulage truckers Daryl and Ash are collecting the first of three loads for the day. We're going to load three decks of cattle to start with. They all need delivering to a strict deadline. We've got a curfew back at the yards at 8 o'clock at night. 
It's, it's pretty important to meet that, otherwise the cattle will be sold last, which means a loss to the owner of the cattle. Already running late after a wrong turn, they need the pickup to go without a hitch. Loading 62 cows as quickly as possible. Four hours later, Daryl and Ash are running late as they get their first load safely to market. All right, we're on. It's unloaded. Take this long with their remaining deliveries and they'll miss their strict hey. deadline. Idiom. The reluctant mm. cattle are not in a hurry. Not having much luck. I just check turn around, mate. F***ing cows. The delay leaves Daryl and Ash only seven hours to drive 360 k's, pick up two loads and deliver them before the 8pm curfew. But the town of Casino is dealing up a bad hand. Beef capital traffic, look at it. Gotta love it. Especially when we're late. As they close in on their second pickup, the weather threatens more delays. Bit of rain down here by the look of it. A bit slippery up here on the hill. Recent rains coupled with a slippery rise up to the ramp is making access torturous. It's getting a little frustrating not being able to get it to stay up on that bank when I'm back there. Is he guiding you? No, he's standing there thinks he can drive the truck better than me, but he probably can't even back a box trailer. <laughs> so trailer hits the bank, it's wanting to push it. I can't keep it. Get up there. I know that, I know that, mate. Could actually get cranky with this fella. Yeah, that one there, that cross the road. In Central Australia. Russell is battling with free-range cattle as he treks through the Red Desert, delivering portable homes to the remote community of Kintor. The turn off to the town signals the start of truck busting dirt. But the outback delivers a deceptively easy ride. I'm driving along here, oh, I'm only sitting on 80, but it's um, like riding in a motor car. It's incredibly smooth, this stretch. I'm just waiting for some pothole, wash away or something to jump out and grab me. These containers have a lot of appliances that are that you find in a normal house. It's we don't want to hit anything and break the contents or actually make the containers flex too much. Basically driving by me my bum. If I can feel it bouncing I slow down and if it sort of gets really smooth well I'll um, speed up a little bit. Russell soon discovers why the ride is so good. OK, mate. Do you want me to jump on the, uh, on the other side? No, you won't stay on you. A greater crew have been hard at work. Sorry, mate. Thank you. It's a bit of an old saying. If it seems too good to be true, it usually is. It doesn't take long for Russell to find the end of the graded track. The closer we get, the worse it's getting. We're down to 30 kilometres per hour now.
the rough road strikes, busting open a door on the side of his new truck. Just noticed that my little um, box doors popped open. They don't look good. I just lost my jack. The jack, jack sort of sits in here. His doors come open on the corrugation. Russell is in big trouble. Without a jack, blowing a tyre could leave him stranded. I don't like travelling out here without a jack. It makes it pretty hard to change the tyres. It's a pretty uh, slow old process. In border town, South Australia. It's like getting teeth pulled out there. Justin Harrison is battling to retract his hydraulic trailer so he can get back on the road. I want the bloody engage for some reason. I just sort of engage and then cut out. He needs to stay on schedule and drive 270 kilometres to Adelaide tonight or risk missing his son compete in the rodeo. If it eats into our time tomorrow, well, it's going to um, put a big question mark on things because it's not really going to work too well loading the truck and that tomorrow like this. I don't want to be stuck with a trailer folded out and bloody middle of someone's yard. So hopefully another couple of minutes and she'll be all folded up and then I can um, get into Adelaide tonight and I'll give someone a ring, see if they can get there first thing in the morning to have a quick look at it. It's two hours past sunset when the trailer is finally retracted. The following morning, it's good news and bad. Justin's fixed the trailer, but South Australian police have served his truck a defect notice. Yeah, I've got a bolt here that's bloody flogged out on one of the suspension components and it's, it's causing the diff to get off centre and vibrate. So um, it needs to, needs to get a new bolt in it and a new bush. The defect notice gives Justin 24 hours grace to get the problem repaired. He decides to soldier on. We just got to poke along and find somewhere where we can um, get these bolts ground out or um, changed over somewhere because um, we just don't have the means to do it here. The next pickup, a 20 tonne prime mover destined for New South Wales, goes without a hitch. With a sick truck, Justin faces a nervous climb through the Adelaide Hills. On the edge of the seat, driving through these hills, it'd be a terrible spot to blow a diff right here. If the seat gets any hotter, it'll just shut down on us, so... There's a bank where we're backing up onto, so once the trailer hits the bank, it's wanting to push it. I can't keep it up there. In Lawrence, New South Wales. It should be right here. Darrell Armfield has wasted half an hour reversing his truck onto a difficult loading ramp. Ah, uh, that'll be all right. Darrell and his fiancée, Ash, need to get two more loads delivered to cattle sale yards before a strict 8pm curfew. If you don't, the cattle lose weight. So basically, the owners don't get what they could for them. So you don't want to risk losing clients. They have to be there. They have to be there. Let's go. OK. Probably about an hour and a half behind already. Five hours left to get here, unload into a four-hour round trip back to the yard by 8 o'clock. Everything's going not to plan. Get these cows off with no trouble, it'll be a whole lot better. Definitely will have earned a beer tonight. Hauling cattle cross country isn't the only delivery problem weighing on Ash's mind. Kids get off the bus this afternoon at 20 to 4, and I have to be there to get them off because there's no one there this afternoon. Seven children from Ash and Darrell's blended family. The kids work the whole lot. If we didn't work well together, we'd probably fall apart. If their cattle delivery had gone to plan, Ash would be home by now, ready to collect the kids. Fingers, legs, arms, toes, it's all crossed. I'm 
literally not going to make it home in the next 10 minutes and my kids are about to get off the bus. And I'll just come and grab them from your place. Thank you. Bye. Oh, she's a godsend. Kimmy, literally an angel. With the seven kids sorted, there's just the cattle to worry about. Just run a little bit light. Thankfully, they're cooperating. The final pickup is down a tight bush track. To squeeze through, Daryl needs to lose a trailer. I've just split it up and pulled the A trailer off because we can't take a B double where we're going. But just as they're making up time. So we have got a slight problem. Our battery's flat on our ramp because the plug's pulled out. Could do a bit of a running repair. That goes through and charges the batteries that run our ramp that lifts up and down. If that doesn't work, we can't get the cattle on and off the truck. We're a long way behind time. I just lost me Jack. Jack sort of sits in here. His doors come open on the corrugation. West of Alice Springs, the dirt roads have punished Russell and his new truck. His wheel jack has been thrown loose somewhere back down the track. This is just a bit of a legacy of the roads that we drive on. I don't like travelling out here without a jack. In this dangerous, inhospitable land, being able to fix your own tyres can be the difference between a life or death situation. Bringing up the rear, Paul the Builder finds a needle in the haystack. Yeah, mate. Did, you, did you lose something? I am actually missing the jack. Rescuing the lost jack from the side of the road. Yours, would it? <laughs> that would be it. That would be really, really handy if I get a flat tyre. Yeah, uh, they generally help out a bit. I think today is a day if I want a shop where I can buy a lotto ticket, I should. After 500 punishing kilometres, Russell and his new truck finally make it to the tiny community of Kintore. But as they prepare the crane to unload the containers, the horizon brings new danger. That's not too good. I think it might rain. Lightning kills around 10 people each year in Australia. Working heavy machinery outside during an electrical storm increases the risk of being hit. The pressure is on Russell to thread his truck through this narrow gate before the heavens open up. I can't see over that side because it's blind. All I need somebody just to yeah. tell me I'm going to hit the fence, right? And I can't get myself straight because directly in front of this gateway is a signpost, right? So I've got to come in at an angle. Yeah, over there, it's just completely blind to me. Russell makes it in safely. But he needs to unload quickly before the weather turns the crane into a potentially deadly lightning conductor. The rain from lightning will have to stop this whole process. I think it's about seven or eight k's up this hill, so it's a pretty big pull up out of here and it gets fairly well steep up here. In South Australia, Justin Harrison is battling the Adelaide Hills and a truck with a worn-out diff. I just sort of want to get a bit of a feel of this truck on the back of the trailer and just try to work into this hill nice and steady without blowing the diff from the get-go. He's heading back to Bordertown. There's a new order of farming equipment. Missed the pickup and he won't make it to his son's bull riding competition. Not the ideal passing spot here going into the tunnel. Like our temperature's getting right up there in the red now. Well, that's not good. If this thing gets any hotter, it'll just shut down on us. There's nowhere to pull up. We're sitting right on 120 at the moment. We shouldn't get any hotter than about 100. Not many hills. 
as long and as steep as this one. I'm sort of looking for the top of this hill pretty soon. of it now. This temperature should start to drop down again now. At last, Justin's ailing rig crawls over the top of the hill. The old diff's held up to get up out of there and the temperature's dropping back down now, so that's a bonus. The truck may have survived the Adelaide Hills, but the trouble's not over yet. We've got something going on here with the police. I don't know what's going on. Might be an accident up the road here somewhere. Where are you going? Border town. No, you won't get through. You have to go by them and in here. Rightio. You get in front of this bike here. No worries, thank you. This detour could blow Justin's schedule out beyond recovery. Oh, it's just one thing after another. It's been a bloody bad luck trip. Just one shit fight after another. Dropped Ash off. She's going to pick the kids up. Got a friend to pick them up for us because we were running late. Near the town of Casino, New South Wales. We might be stretching the curfew tonight, I think. A race against the clock is putting Daryl Armfield under increasing pressure. She's a pretty rough, bumpy, windy road, and we're in a little bit of a hurry. To add to his worries, an electrical ramp inside the trailer is busted. Daryl needs it working to load the cattle. The power lead keeps pulling out of this trailer and not charging. And now I can't get it to work because it's out of power. He enlists some help to fix the problem. This is James. He's our mechanic and stockman. We're struggling, we're struggling. Everything goes to plan. We'll be right on the limits of the curfew. A bit of a tighter track here than what we've been on today. Right, eh, James? It's all got to happen smooth. All right. Hey, James. Go. Come here for a sec. With a little roadside mechanics. James and Daryl get the show back on the road. We've got it working. Something's finally gone our way. Get up. Hey. 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 Get up. Get up. Loaded it easy this time. Now he just needs an easy run to the sale yards. Right, hey, let's head to Casino, the beef capital of Australia, James. Did you know that? Curfew is 8 o'clock, it's now 7.30 now and we've got about 25 minutes to get to town and all going well. They're pretty strict on it. Daryl's pushing hard, but he's still running behind. Ah, uh, we've got about 8 minutes to get there and probably got about 10 minutes to go. He calls the sale yards to try and buy himself some time. I'm just coming into Gaze Hill now with Duckett's last load on. I'm probably going to be scratching to get there right on eight. Uh, I'll, I'll rejoin the load and kill him, mate. OK, thank you. Might have brought a couple of minutes there. We made it. It's been a wild ride, but Daryl can finally put these cows and this crazy day to bed. They're in the yard ready to sell tomorrow. Everyone's happy, including me. I think it might rain. Rain from lightning will have to stop this whole process. In the red heart of Australia, storms are threatening to stop Russell unloading. With dangerous weather approaching, Russell and his team need to move quickly. But there's a problem. Nice, no, it's gone the other way now. Yeah, no, got it wrong. 
The weight on the crane is unbalanced. In desperation, they attempt to straighten the sling. Remember this one was heavy, that end. I reckon boom just a little bit. As wind increases the danger, they try one last time. Yeah, it'll be right. Like, we'll sort of get an idea which way it swings. Keep it like that. Could be right. We go down. Work. Down now. Yeah. Down. If everybody's happy, I think we'll leave it here. Russell has beaten the storm, and inside, the portable homes are still in perfect condition. As Russell heads for home, the verdict on his new truck is in. I'm finding it far more comfortable in this truck. It'll never make these bumps go away, but it's making it a little bit more pleasurable for me. I'm not sure how far this detour is. We've just been sent on. It's just one thing after another. With less than 12 hours to get to his next pickup, Justin has been forced on a 150-kilometre detour. So that's another hour and a half of loss. I was trying to get back to um, get to Charlie and go to the rodeo with him. The truck driving father is desperate to finish his job and fly to Singleton in New South Wales to see his son Charlie compete in the rodeo. It's all on level and it goes from one side to the other and it's causing this truck and trailer to rock and roll all over the road. Well, I've never been down this road before either. Don't know the road, you really don't want to go down and do 100. Big trucks coming both ways. Back out on the highway now. Justin might be back on track, but he's way behind schedule. We've missed our time to get loaded tonight. Hopefully tomorrow's a lot better than today. At sunrise, Justin's hopes of a happy ending. Oh, mate, this f***ing truck. What else could you have? Are crushed. Just metres from the next pickup, Justin's truck refuses to start. Now there's a gearbox, low power, and shifter fold in it. Under the watchful eye of a worried client, <laughs> Justin disconnects and reconnects all the wiring. Not the easiest plug to get on that, this one. Right, we'll give her a go now and see what happens. That's the sound we're looking for. Yep, she's gonna go, so... I think we're fixed up. At last, Justin can pick up his final load. Come forward if you want now. Right, eh? that's about us. After a delay-ridden 1,800-kilometre journey, it's job done. That was a bit tight, but pretty happy that it loaded, so, yeah, that's good. And there's no way he's going to miss his son's bull riding competition. I'm very proud of my kids and probably try and get to um, the airport and jump on a plane and get back and catch um, catch Charlie's rodeo. You know, just give him that bit of encouragement and he digs a little bit deeper when he's got a bit of support. So we've just got to keep head down and keep poking along and overcome whatever challenges are in front of you and just try and keep getting the job done.